Welcome to tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Friday, June 7th, 2013, and here's a look at some of our top stories. Tonight, more Bilderberg coverage the globalists don't want you to see. And Rob Dew breaks down the NSA's PRISM data collection system. And finally, an exclusive interview with Fallen Skies actor Peter Shinkoda. All this and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, it's finally begun. The confab known as the Bilderberg meeting is finally kicked off, this time in London. Every year they move to a different location. And this year, Alex Jones decided to fly across the pond and join in the fun. Uh, a couple years ago, it was in Switzerland, and it was Aaron Dykes and Paul Joseph Watson um, in the mountains, the Swiss Alps, uh, doing their thing, making videos, uploading them. I mean, just really taking the alternative media to the next level. Well, this time, it's Alex Jones. And man, let me tell you, he gave him a Watford welcome. As that reads the headline in The Independent, written by Susie Monsieur, who you can tell by reading this in her tone, she's obviously a lover of bootlicking uh, for the globalists. Um, she writes, yet there was nothing secretive about the start of the four-day ego fest, which is being live streamed into conspiracy theorists' living rooms all over the planet by hardcore of alternative media, epitomized by U.S. radio host Alex Jones, who had assembled in, uh, those had assembled in the hundreds in hopes of catching a glimpse of the attendees, ranging from their own Chancellor George Osborne, Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls, to the heads of Google, BP, Goldman Sachs, and Shell. Even the BBC, which some of the Bilderberg conspiracy theorists believe is a shorthand for Bilderberg Club, has been its, uh, such has been its lack of coverage in previous years, was out in force, as were most other mainstream media outlets led by the vociferous Jones, whose voice practically carried the half mile up the hill from the media tent to the hotel where the attendees were gathering. There was even talk a Bilderberger might break rank to disclose for the first time since the group started in 1954 some of the details of their discussion. So we see once again, yes, the mainstream media, we finally forced them to cover it, and yet they sugarcoat it. They continue to say there's nothing to see here. It's just a, you know, a little party for the elites, and why should we be concerned? And once again, as Alex Jones has pointed out, uh, if this was 120 to 200 of, of the biggest movie stars or biggest rock stars or, you know, biggest World Wrestling Federation stars gathering together, there would be media all over the place. There would be media access everywhere. People would be getting their questions answered as, why are you guys here? What are you guys doing? Let us know. But with this, no, they build the Great Wall of Bilderberg. They close off the area to basically everybody. Uh, they've, they've locked down the total Watford area into a police state. People are having to show their passports just to go home. Footpaths are even being closed down. All this for a meeting that doesn't exist, and if it does, there's really nothing going on. Even CNN finally got in on the expose. Jake Tapper uh, put together a presentation at the end of his show yesterday, and of course, vilifying the people who have brought this out in the open because they really don't want to cover this because these are their master's meeting and we don't want to draw attention to that. We're going to go to that clip right now. Now, if you're thinking this is just another cabal of the people who secretly run the world, so does noted author, provocateur, and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones from InfoWars. Magna Carta has been restricted for the scum globalists that are in there. Jones is broadcasting live from the conference this week. So once again, we see the mainstream media doing its job as being a gatekeeper for the real power structure in the world. And they're going to continue to do it. That is why we have to support the alternative media. That's right. PrisonPlanet.tv is where we have all the archives, the nightly news, the daily show, Alex's rants, all of our movies, everything there in one spot for our subscribers. And, you know, once you're a subscriber, you could take that video and, you know, pretty much do what you want with it. Put it out on your websites. Just get the information out. That's what we want to see because that's how we're going to change things. It's not going to change by sitting on your duff and not doing anything. It's going to change by people waking other people up. That's how it happens. It is like a little pyramid. You know, you wake one person up and then they wake two people up and they wake, four, you know, and that's how it builds. That's how it builds. Um, also, I want to let you know, if you're looking for a one repository for all of our Bilderberg news, you can go to Infowars.com forward slash B. We've got the live streams up there for Ustream. 
uh, Justin TV. Uh, we've got the shows, the YouTube videos that Alex has been putting up, the special articles. <clears throat> All the latest from Bilderberg is right there at Infowars.com forward slash B. Now, uh, we just talked about how the mainstream media is basically throwing stones at us for making them actually get up and do their jobs and cover this event because they don't want to do it. They don't want to cover their masters. Well, one person who used to be in that camp and has now done a full 180 is Charlie Skelton. Four years ago, he went to Greece for the Bilderberg meeting and he was there. He met uh, Jim Tucker. He was harassed by cops and he, on his way there, he was making jokes about it and he thought it was fun and games and not a big deal and <laughs> these crazy conspiracy theorists writing all about it. Well, after spending a few hours being detained on two different occasions by the police, well, he suddenly had a change of heart. And you can see that now he's in his home element. <clears throat> Here's his latest article, Bilderberg 2013, Friendly Policeman, A Press Zone and The One Show. Delegates still sped today behind blacked out windows, but the secretive conference is attracting unprecedented attention. And if you take a look at a picture right there, let's bring that up. Look at what they were hiding behind. <laughs> all, all of these world elites are hiding behind this tabloid magazine of, of the Daily Mail. Child porn teacher is allowed back into the classroom. Wow, are they really just throwing it in our faces that they're into child porn? I don't know. But uh, one thing is for certain, Charlie Skelton has had a change of heart. He's been a guest on our show many times during uh, the late the Bilderberg since the one in Greece. Even I remember uh, actually getting him on when I first started it was when Bilderberg happened back in 09 and I got a hold of him and we got him on the show because he, he wasn't laughing anymore. He wasn't making jokes, but here we go into his article. Four Bilderbergs ago, has it been that long? There were barely a dozen people outside the conference in Greece. The relationship with the press back then was simple. Arrest them, follow them, harass them, chase them out of town. But in Watford 2013, it is a very different sort of town. A town full of satellite trucks, Italian news crews, a Financial Times journalist. It's a town with a press zone, a press zone with portable toilets, and hand gel. It's been also relatively civilized. The police have been strolling about smiling. Puppies have been rolling on the cut grass. So as you can see, due to people like Alex Jones and other alternative news outlets for bringing attention to this, even Charlie Skelton, he has been a big part of bringing this out be because by him publishing his articles in The Guardian, it was able to lend it an air of credibility and th therefore it cannot be denied as simply Alex Jones roaming around uh, uh, a Hilton hotel in Virginia rambling like a crazy man. That's what the New York Times once said about him. Uh, we continue. One mainstream journalist, as he wished to be known, described the press zone as a very well organized, surprisingly so, considering it was put on by volunteer journalists, liaisoning with the news media on, behalf, on Bilderberg's behalf. He was expecting a disorganized rabble with all dreadlocks and no substance. What he found was a mix of people, from dreadlocks to sharp suits, from Christians to hardened atheists. He could see 60 years of secrecy evaporating in front of his eyes. What, he, what was he expecting now? His advice for the Bilderberg was to take the bull by the horns and make it a proper conference. Start behaving like what it is. And that's all we're asking. If we're going to have the world's elites get together and violate, well, our own country's Logan Act and pick presidents and do all this, well, at least tell us that you're doing it. Stop hiding in secrecy. Stop hiding behind your brick walls and your concrete walls and your steel walls and your rings of security. Stop hiding behind that. Well, what do you have to hide? You know, actually, I, I went out and bought a domain name today. What do they have to hide.com? Because I want to expose these people. And basically what I want to do is get, we'll get into this later, this whole NSA mess and how the president got up and said, well, Congress is monitoring it. It's okay. You know what? I want to see Congress's emails. I want to see their phone records. I want to know who they talk to over and over again. What do they have to hide? What do they have to hide? That's all I'm saying. And, you know, I think anybody who's had their phone records pulled or their Internet uh, searches tracked should be asking the same question. Moving on, this is a Paul Joseph Watson article. Alex Jones infiltrates the Grove Hotel by boat. That's right. He launched a uh, naval audio barrage against the Bilderbergers today uh, by floating on a barge into the grounds behind where the Grove Hotel is. 
You can find the article on Infowars.com and the videos on our Ustream site, all of which can be found at Infowars.com forward slash B. I'll read you the end here. Soon after the barge began selling towards the Grove, it was, an accompanied, it was accompanied by a police boat along with several other officers from G4S security. Police allowed the boat to complete half its journey and it was not allowed to turn back and pass by the Grove for a second time despite, despite numerous tour boats having full access for the entire length of the canal. Once again, the press is being censored. And so we're going to go to that video now. It's quite entertaining. Builder Barge, as it's being called and touted from the InfoWars Command Center. And here is that video. We, we, are, we are moving, fella. We're not moving fast enough. Well, we've got a job to do. You might as well let us do it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been stuck. You've got to move. Right. Right, right. Right. We're not what's, moving. What's right. the, we're the what speed do we have to travel at? The waterway. The waterway. I'm telling you, you're not allowed to stop. You must keep moving. We're not stopping. We are moving. Okay? Yes. Are you're not going to board us like pirates, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Help! Just keep moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How dare us address the globalists? But, yeah, Before they've got you, you to die up here, we might as well just do the job. That, well, that way we won't have to keep on coming up and down. Are oh, you taking yourself real serious? Look at that guy. He enjoys tyranny. He enjoys thinking he's tough. Hey, half of you will have cancer within six years. You and your whole family, they're murdering you right now. You're too stupid to see what they're putting in your vaccines. You'll be laughing on chemo, bud. Remember when you're dying, Alex Jones told you who killed you. Remember. Those people in there are eugenicists on record. And all of you are too weak-minded to find out about it. You'll watch your children die before you become men. The globalists make me want to throw up every time I realize everything they're doing. These boys. Let's try and stay on the boat. <laughs> I'm not getting pressure with you, brother. Your new world order is going down, you globalist scum! So there's Alex uh, attacking them with bullhorn, with barge, with protesters, basically anything he can get his hands on to let them know that they're scum and that they will not hide behind their veil of secrecy any longer. Uh, moving on, one of the attendees will be General, former General David Petraeus, or former CIA director, I should say. They didn't strip him of his uh, stars, but he is the former CIA director. He will be at Bilderberg to craft what he is calling Big Data Spy Grid. This is from Paul Joseph Watson. Former CIA Director David Petraeus is in attendance at the 2013 Bilderberg Group Conference to help construct the Big Data Spy Grid, which is set to become the new frontier of clandestine statecraft as internet connectivity becomes ubiquitous. And you might remember yesterday, we discussed a flashback article from 2012, and it's uh, CIA Chief, we will spy on you through your dishwasher. And there's Petraeus right there, former CIA Director, playing golf on the Wii, and he talked about basically they were going to have a whole system set up where they could, you know, using Connect and the smart meters and basically all the different smart appliances in your house, they can send data over power lines and they can use all this system to basically listen in on what you're doing, know where you're at in the house, know what appliances you're using, and eavesdrop on you. And that made him very excited because as, a, as the, the head spy, being able to plant bugs in people's houses without actually going to their houses and actually get court orders and stuff, that makes somebody like that really happy. So uh, David Petraeus is going to be there, of course, working on keeping you safe from the terrorists. Also, another person that's going to be attending, David Cameron, head of the UK, of the parliament there. David Cameron is to attend the Secret of Bilderberg Group at the Luxury Grove Hotel in Watford on Friday evening in a move that is likely to raise questions about his pledge to lead Britain's most transparent government. That's right. Transparency means go to a secret meeting. That's what it means in 1984. Downing Street said it was acting in an open manner by publicizing the Prime Minister's attendance in advance. But we won't tell you what he said or who he spoke with or anything else. That is, of course, being transparent. And uh, this brings us to the end of our Bilderberg section. But before we do that, we have a final video from John Bowne in his installment of Bilderberg Exposed, finalizing the evidence of the Bilderberg agenda. And here it is. 
Welcome to Bilderberg Exposed, Evolution by Stealth. Tonight we will examine the intent of the New World Order and its plan to control human destiny. The leaked minutes from the 1966 Bilderberg Group show that as early as 47 years ago, the guiding opinion on the minds of the Bilderbergers was that nationalism is dangerous, a reorganization of NATO as a global police force, and the trade relations between industrial and developing countries would be key to forming a centralized global government. The policies, whether the Bilderbergers want to admit they exist or not, have formulated the European Union, NAFTA, the World Trade Organization, strengthening of NATO, war powers to the United Nations, an emerging technocracy that destroys individual freedoms, and the groundwork to create a North American Union that places the United States under a total foreign banker government. Here are some quotes from the Bilderberg horse's mouth. The New World Order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than from the top down. But in the end run around national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned frontal assault. Richard Gardner, CFR member. Some even believe we are a part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty, and I am proud of it. David Rockefeller. Thank you for joining us all week with these brief, informative pieces spotlighting the basic framework of the New World Order strategy. Please share them with your friends and family. Also, please visit InfoWarsStore.com for more research on the New World Order agenda where nothing is off limits. Your family's future, right down to your DNA, is currently on the table at the Grove Hotel in Watford, England, as the elitist Bilderberg agenda evolves by stealth. This is John Bound for the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> All right, thank you, John, for that report. And uh, he really took that upon himself to make sure that we had one of those every day of the week. And I'm sure we can get him to do a wrap up of the event next week, at least one or two, because it seems like after the event is where you really get the juicy intel of what went on, what was talked about, who met with who, and all the other gory details of, well, when the most powerful people get together and talk about nothing. Uh, we're gonna go to break. But stay tuned, we're going to come back with another news segment, more on this police state stuff, this whole NSA thing that is just blowing out of the water. And of course, the, even the president had some remarks on it. And after that, we're going to have an interview with Peter Shinkoda. Uh, we had one of our affiliates out in L.A. Uh, shoot this interview. We had Rob Jacobson put it together, and he is going to lay some very interesting stuff on you, especially concerning the Boston bombing and some things he witnessed himself. And that'll be after the next news segment, and stay tuned for that. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.